Okay, next we're going to talk about logistic growth models. So a logistic growth model is a type of growth where it's going to continue like exponentially like we've talked about before, but it'll get to a point where it's going to kind of level out. So it kind of goes up and kind of levels out uh, like that. And so this is a little bit more realistic uh, is if for certain situations. For instance, if you have a petri dish with some bacteria in there, they're not going to grow exponentially forever because eventually they're going to run out of food and then the population will kind of be stagnant. It'll kind of increase for a little bit and then kind of level out. And we have different populations of cities are kind of the same way. You might have a whole bunch of growth and the city itself limits how many people can move in and then uh, we have a, slow, a slowdown as far as growth is concerned. That's what we mean by logistic models. Uh, so a logistic model will look something like this. You have a number on top and you have a number here, a number there. These are all going to be considered uh, constants. This right here, this this is negative point zero two five one five. That's considered a logistic uh, constant on that. The top number is actually referred to as the limiting factor. Now what this would be is the top number tells you what the highest the graph will reach. So if you take a look at the notes what I mentioned that, if it talks about limiting factor, that's the number that would be uh, on top. Okay, so first what we're gonna do here is we're going to go through these questions based on this model that's given. Now to give you a little background with this model, this model is for the population of Canada and the T that you see in that formula is the number of years since this is, means January 1st, uh, 1900. So whenever you have a T that's in here, this refers to how many years after uh, 1900, so something to keep in mind here. So you're estimating the population of Canada. All right, so it says, first of all, evaluate P of zero and interpret its meaning. Okay, so this means that zero, you're talking about what was the population in 1900. That's actually what this uh, is talking about. Let's go ahead and evaluate that. We're going to find P of zero. Okay, so you put zero in for the time. So 55.1 over 1 plus 9.6 e to the negative 0 0.02515 times zero. Okay, so we're putting a zero in for the time. We want to work this out, uh, what this equals. Now anytime you have something that's raised to the power of zero, it's equal to one. Zero times that decimal will just turn that whole thing into a zero. So essentially you're going to have e to the zero. So you're going to have 55.1 over one plus 9.6, and then we have a one in there for the e to the zero section. So essentially you're just taking 55.1 dividing by, well, this will end up being 10.6. If you put that into your calculator, uh, what you're going to end up with is, is about 5.2. So what the meaning of this is, it says that in January 1st, 1990, or 19, 1900, I should say, the population is 5.2. That's what, that's what the meaning would be. That's the approximate population of Canada in 1900 would be 5.2. Next, they want you to approximate the population on January 1st, 2015. Now in order to get this, we have to figure out how many years have passed since 1900, because remember time is the number of years since 2015. So if you take 2015 minus 1990, you're going to get 115 years. So next, what they want you to do is they want you to find the population 115 years after 19, 1900, which will give you 2015. Okay, so this means that we're going to do the same thing as before. Except instead of putting in a zero for time, we're going to put in 115. So let's go ahead and write this out. 9.6, we have the E. Here's our constant. Just be careful when you're writing this out that you write the correct numbers here. 0 0.02515 is what we have on this one. So I'm going to make sure we get all the, the decimals correct. Now, when you put something like this into your calculator, because you have two things that are on the bottom, Make sure you put parentheses around the entire bottom when you're putting that into your calculator. Now certain calculators, if you have the TI-30XA, you might have to do this bottom one first, and you would do that in reduced order. You would multiply this first, e to that number, times 9.6 plus 1 to get the answer. At any rate, you want, you want to go ahead and multiply that decimal out first, so let's go ahead and, and take care of that decimal part on top, 9.6e, and if I multiply that by 115, then we get negative 2.89225. That's what we'll get when we multiply the exponent out first. 
So then this whole thing you want to put into your calculator. And when you put that into the calculator, you get 35.958 with some more decimals. This particular instructions here says round the nearest tenth, but again, follow the instructions in the book or online to see what it's telling you to put in. But in this case, uh, it would round to about 36. So 36.0 would be your final answer. And so what, what the meaning of that would be is that means that would be the current population of Canada would be about uh, 36 million. And this 36 million is actually correct. It seems like that's pretty low for the population of Canada. That is actually a uh, an accurate figure if you were to look at uh, statistics. Canada is a lot of sparsely populated areas. I mean, there's major centers, of course, Toronto, Vancouver, and the areas like that. Um, but in between, there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of open space there. So even though it seems like that's a smaller number, that actually is an accurate figure uh, for what the population of Canada would be in 2015. Okay, so for part C, it says from the model, during which year will the population reach 45 million? So, since they're giving us a, a number for the population, we're going to put that in the left side of the equation uh, for P of T. Now, we don't have to include the million. We don't have to actually write all the zeros out there. We can just use 45 only because the population that's given here is automatically in terms of millions. So, we're going to do 45 equals 55.1 over 1 plus 9.6 E. Well, of course, we have this decimal here. 02515T. Right. So we want to solve uh, this equation for T. Best way to do that is we're going to uh, get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to cross multiply here in this case. So I'm going to multiply these two together and these two together. So I'm going to do 45 times 1 plus 9.6E negative 0.02. 515t, that's going to equal 1 times 55.1, so I get 55.1 left over there. Now, you could multiply the 45 out into each of those, but instead, what I'm going to do, which might make it a little bit easier, is I'm first going to start by dividing both sides by 45. So then if I divide both sides by 45 here, that'll make it a little bit easier to solve. So I have this decimal here, and then I, have, I do 55.1 divided by 45. If you do that, 1.2244 with some more decimals after that. Now the ultimate goal is you want to isolate the part that has the, the E that's in it. So I'm going to subtract one from both sides, and I'll get 9.6E negative 0.02515T. That's going to equal 0.2244 with some more decimals. This decimal, you don't want to round it. Keep that number in your calculator because uh, if you round it too early, you may not get the right answer and those online programs are picky as far as the answers that you put in. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it uh, uh, with all the decimals there. Now, next thing we're gonna do, divide both sides by 9.6. So we're gonna come up here. So I'm gonna get E.02515 T. Divide both sides, so I'm gonna take point 2244 first, then hit divide by, and then 9.6. Always dividing by the number in front of the E that's there. So if I do that for the next step, then we get this one, 0 0.0233 with some more decimals. Again, I'm going to keep that whole decimal in my calculator. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides to cancel out the E. And whenever you have a natural log and an E together, that's going to cancel and just give you the exponent. So in this case, I can just write the exponent only, 2515t, and then I have natural log of 0.02, that, uh, that decimal we talked about before. Again, it continues uh, off, the, off this page here, so it keeps continuing there. So take natural log of both sides. Then divide both sides by the number in front of the t. So we're gonna divide both sides by 0.02515t, and when you divide all that, we finally get down to approximately 149 we get as our answer. So the question is, does this number answer the question? Well, let's see what it says. It says, during which, during which year will the population reach 45 million? Well, this is not a year, 149. The 149 represents the number of years since 1990, or 1900, sorry, 1900. So 1900, you're gonna add 149 to it, and we get the year 2049. So remember, 
T number of years since 1900. And so you're adding 149 to that, and so 2049 would be uh, your answer for part C. Okay, for the last two parts for D and E, it says what will the term 9.6 over E to the point 02515T approach as T, this, this is read as T approaches infinity. So if T goes to infinity, they're asking what does this whole thing uh, go to? Well, if you try different values for T, if you put like a 10 in there, a hundred, a thousand, a million, a billion, and, and put that in there, what you're gonna see what's happening on the bottom is the bottom is gonna keep getting larger. Now you have a decimal here times 10 or a decimal times 100, still it's gonna be positive and it's gonna be increasing. Every time you increase the T, this whole figure is gonna get larger. Now, if you have 9.6 and you're dividing it by a, a very large number on the bottom, what's gonna happen is eventually the whole thing is actually going to go to zero. If you take 9.6 divided by 100, 1,000, million, a billion, the whole entire result is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and the whole thing is going to eventually approach zero. So we're going to say that for part D, uh, the answer should be zero. So as this gets very, very big, the whole thing is going to get very, very small because the top number is not going to be changing. So let's take a look at uh, part E. Part E is asking you for the limiting factor of P of T. Now from the definition that I talked about in the very beginning, right before I have this example problem in the notes, I kind of break down what each of these mean. And so limiting factor is actually going to be the top number that you see here. And what that represents is if you got something that's increasing like this and then it levels out, the top number actually says what this horizontal asymptote would be. So the graph is going to come very, very close to you but not cross it. And what limiting factor means is that's how high this model says that we're going to grow. So I'll put 55.1 and of course I'll have to put million because that's what it actually represents. And what this means is that this model is suggesting that the population of Canada is not going to go over 55.1 million. Now is that going to hold true in the future? We don't really know. There's a lot of different variables that affect that. But we're going to say in this case that that's the top number. This model is suggesting that 55.1 will be the population will get very, very close to but never get more than 55.1 million. That's what we mean by uh, limiting factor.